Hey everyone, Derek here with something a little bit different than the usual update. Rather than just list off all the features with no visual aids or not showing off anything, I thought we'd do a little tour of the Nintendo UK website, which has listed specifications for the Nintendo Switch and all of its accessories, basically what's coming in the package itself when you get it on March 3rd. So right off the bat, we have the console itself, and we get her pointed out, it's pointed out that we have the power button, the volume buttons, a 6.2 inch, inch capacitive touchscreen, the speakers at the bottom here with number 4, the game card, and the game card slot. But interestingly, number 6, the uh, audio jack, it lists down here that it's for connecting commercially available headphones, microphones, or headsets. Now previously, everyone thought that the app that Nintendo would be releasing for the Switch and sort of works with it would be required in order to communicate with other players. But it seems like there's an option at least, maybe, to use stuff within. Maybe this is for third parties or something else. It's hard to really say, and Nintendo's been very unclear about this, but it will support headsets, and that's pretty important, and that's great to see, honestly. Uh, of course, it all has also has the rail for the Joy-Cons, and a brightness sensor to uh, assume, uh, presumably adjust how uh, the screen looks in different uh, lights. So it'll get brighter in the dark, it'll get less bright when it's light out, that kind of thing. You know, normal stuff. Uh, we also have a back view where we can see, of course, the stand that'll help it stand up, uh, the other side of the rail for the Joy-Con, and underneath the stand is where the micro SD card slot will be, which supports micro SD, micro SD HC, and micro SD XC memory cards. Uh, the game data that cannot fit on the console's system memory can be stored on those. However, they do want to note that an update via the internet connection will be required to use micro SD XC memory cards whenever those are made available. Uh, and of course, we also have the USB Type-C connector at the base, uh, which is how we'll connect to the AC adapter or the actual dock. Now, there's also uh, more details here about the specific specifications, and we have the size, which is 102 millimeters by 239 millimeters by 13.9 millimeters with the Joy-Cons attached. For those of you in uh, the U.S., that's essentially four about about 4 inches by 9.5 inches by half an inch, and it's 1.1 inches at its thickest. In the case of here, that's 28.4 um, millimeters at its thickest, which goes from the tips of the analog sticks to the ZLZR button protrusion, protrusions. Uh, now, mo most interesting is the weight which is approximately 297 grams on its own, and with the Joy-Con controllers attached, it's 398 grams. Um, now, in, now, for comparison, that is point, uh, 0.65 pounds, or with the Joy-Cons attached, 0.9 pounds. And another point of comparison is that the new 3DS XL is currently 260 grams, or 0.57 pounds, so it's slightly more heavy. It's slightly heavier than the 3DS. So it's slightly heavier than the 3DS XL. The gamepad is 490 grams or 1.1 pounds, so it's slightly less heavy than the gamepad. So it's a little idea there uh, for what you can exactly expect. Um, of course, we know that it is a capacitive touchscreen with 6.2 inch LCD with a 12, 1280 by 720 resolution. Its CPU GPU is using an NVIDIA customized Tegra processor. It has 32 gigabytes of uh, system memory. And uh, communication features are the wireless, wireless LAN for the TV mode, and a wired uh, LAN connection is possible through a uh, adapter. Its video output put is 1080p, 60 frames per second when it's on the TV, um, but it's only 720p when it's on the uh, console itself. Uh, the audio output supports linear PCM 5.1 channel and uh, this output is via the HDMI cable in the TV mode. Stereo speakers of course, the USB ter terminal, headphone jack, all this good stuff that we kind of already know and of course the updates to the micro SD XC card. Um, sensors, it has an accelerometer, gyroscope, and brightness sensor. Its operating environment is between uh, 5 and 35 degrees Celsius with a humidity of 20 to 80 percent, so pretty, pretty sturdy, pretty standard, I'd say. Its battery uh, is a lithium-ion um, 
with the it, the internal battery cannot be removed. So if the battery needs to uh, be replaced, they plan to offer a paid replacement via Nintendo customized support. So hopefully this battery lasts a while, but fortunately they are offering it, although you do have to pay for it. So that's the way it goes, I suppose. Uh, that the battery life, um, it can last for more than six hours, but will vary depending on the software, which we've already heard. And they do offer up the example of Zelda, which was only, which will only be playable for roughly three hours before it needs a charge. Uh, it'll take three hours to charge it approximately, and but that is also the time taken when the console was in sleep mode. So who knows how long it'll take otherwise. But that's the console itself. Um, we also, but we also have the dock, which shows us. Uh, where the USB ports are located on the side here, the TV outlet uh, LED, and then the system connector in the scent in the bottom there. Uh, on the back, we have all this good stuff that shows just how thick it actually is. And we can see uh, the USB port, the HDMI port, and um, the back cover. However, this is shown open, so it looks like they've opened it up to sort of show more of what you can see. And it'll actually be kind of elegant because it flips down, you can see it pop up, and you have an easy way to just slip the cords uh, from here out through this little hole. So it's kind of elegant in that way. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, and they even say about how it has a simpler presentation. As for its size, it's 140, 104 millimeters by 173 by 54. And uh, that basically comes across to 4 inches by 6.8 by 2.1. Its weight is approximately 327 grams, which is roughly uh, 0.72 pounds. And we can see all of its different connectors and everything else it can do, which we're already aware of. Uh, next up, we have the Joy-Cons and all of our, their buttons. Uh, we have, you know, all that's pretty standard and whatnot. We have the home button, of course, suspends and goes to the home menu. Uh, does it have the the capture button? So yeah, you can take screenshots during play, which we already knew about, and it'll eventually become videos uh, thanks to a future update. Uh, on the back, we have the ZL and ZR buttons. Uh, three, that is the release button. So that's, that's what you tap in order to um, take the Joy-Cons away from the console itself or whatever they're currently attached to. Um, there is an IR sensor uh, on, I believe that's the right one? Yeah, I believe that's the right one. Uh, on the bottom facing side, and on the side we can see the connector itself. And of course it also uh, has this the smaller L and R buttons for each one. So, yep, as well as the sync button for you to sync up to whatever you might have. So, all pretty elegant, all, all makes sense. As far as the technical specifications, its size is 102 millimeters by 35.9 by 28.4, which roughly comes out to 4 inches by 1.4 inches by 1.1 inches. Um, the weight is uh, 49 grams for the left Joy-Con, 52.1 for the right Joy-Con because it has a little bit more in there under the hood, uh, but that comes out to uh, 1.7 ounces for the left Joy-Con and 1.8 ounces for the right. So it really isn't that much of an increase in size and weight. You might not even notice the difference. Uh, of course, they also lay out all the buttons that are available for each one, um, the functions. So the right one is the one that has the Bluetooth and well, it has Bluetooth and the NFC. Um, both have the accelerometer and gyroscope, while the right one has the IR motion camera, and of course there's the HD rumble that they're they're really uh, pushing. So, and again, once again, the internal battery cannot be removed. If the battery needs to be replaced, paid uh, paid service. Uh, battery life is about 20 hours, uh, but that's an estimate, so it might depending. Uh, Based on individual, based on individual persons, excuse me, and the charging time is approximately three and a half hours. Uh, so please note to charge Joy-Con, you must attach them to a Nintendo con Switch console or Joy-Con charging grip sold separately. So the grip that we have that it's coming with does not charge. So you need something else to go with that. So I'm assuming most people will just attach it to the uh, the Switch console itself and charge it that way. And fortunately, it, they do last a while. 20 hours is a pretty good battery life. Of course, we also have the uh, Joy-Con strap, 
which has the SL and SR buttons like before. They just press down in. Um, marks for the plus and minus, uh, so you can so see which strap goes onto which, I believe. Um, and then, of course, the rail and the lock itself. So, yeah. Uh, that's all good. From the side, we can see what it all looks like. We got the player, there actually will be a player LED in there, as well as the slide lock itself. So, again, again, all pretty elegant, all things considered. Uh, as for its size, uh, one, 101 millimeters by 14.6 by 13.9, which is about 4 inches by 0.6 inches by 0.5 inches, and its approximate weight is 18.7 grams or 0 0.7 ounces. So pretty light, which is to be expect expected since it's only really attaching to the Joy Cons themselves. The grip, which is you know be a way to play with a standard controller if you don't want to get a Pro controller. Only has the pro uh, the player LED as well as the rails, and from the back, just a strap attachment so you can pop it on there and strap it or do whatever. I guess I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, but as far as its size, it's 101 millimeters by 144 by 40.1, and that's approximately four inches by 5.7 uh, inches by 1.6. Its approximate weight is 97 grams, which comes out to 3.4 ounces uh, for American, uh, <laughs> the unit of me measurement. So yeah, that is everything that comes with the Switch uh, that's going to be in the box and we can expect. All things considered, it's pretty elegant in how they have everything set up. I'd say I'm not a tech savvy person by any means, but it seems all well and good to me. And uh, I think uh, Nintendo's done a pretty good job here. Uh, and I like how light everything is. It really does sell the portability aspect. It's not, of course, it won't fit in your pocket, but if you have a bag or a purse or whatever you might use, it'll easily slip in there and you won't really feel the weight. So with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on the Switch and other things gaming too. Till next time, bye.